In the next few lectures, we need to talk about the three different types of fact tables. And luckily, there are only these three different types. So we have transactional, periodic snapshot and accumulating snapshot fact table. And therefore, in the next three lectures, we are going to talk about these different types and what is specific about those fact tables. So that's what we are going to do in the next three lectures. The most fundamental fact table is the transactional fact table. So therefore, we first want to learn about this transactional fact table. In this transactional fact table, we have one row that is defined by one event or one transactions. So the facts in this transactional fact table are just measurements of one event or one transaction. So this is one transaction that takes place at one specific time and at a specific place usually. So this is something that is happening, an event or a transaction. For example, a sales transaction or some other examples that we are going to look at in just a second. And also this transaction is the definition basically of our grain. So our grain means we have one transaction that makes one row and therefore the transaction, so one transaction defines the grain. But now let's have a look at an example of that. So these are just very common examples. For example, we have a sales transaction and in this sales transaction, we see that one row is just one transaction. And in this transaction, we can have different measurements. So for example, we have units, how many units have been sold in this single transaction. And then we have also foreign keys. So we have what was the product, what was the time of the transaction, and also of course the date and other dimensions. And the same we can also apply for the other example of the calls, where we have one call is basically like one event, and then we can have different measurements associated. So for example, how long was the call and other measurements of that event. And of course, again, we have different foreign keys. But now what is specific about this transactional fact table? We can see that there are, for example, many foreign keys. And this is one of the important characteristics. But first we want to note that this is the most common type and it's also very flexible because we can analyze it in a lot of different ways with many dimensions. And also usually all of these transactions and these values that we measure, they are usually additive. So this gives us a lot of flexibility. And also what helps in different analysis is that those types of fact tables have usually many foreign keys associated. So they have a lot of dimensions that we can analyze. But one problem that we commonly have with those fact tables is that they can be enormous in size and their growth is also usually very rapid. So they can grow very fast and therefore oftentimes we need to aggregate those tables. So this is the most fundamental fact table. And if we've understood that, we can also easily understand the other types of fact tables. So the next one that we need to have a look at is the periodic snapshot fact table. And that's what we are doing in the next lecture. Now let's talk about the periodic snapshot fact table. In this fact table, we have one row defined by the summaration or aggregation of a measurement across many events. So it is taking place in a standard period. So we aggregate all of the events, all of the transactions and calculate the related measures for one specific standard period. So usually this is one hour, one day, one week, one month and so on. And then we have this all summarized. And of course, now this lowest period, so this standard period is defining our grain. For example, one day, one week or one hour. And an example of that is if we have, for example, our sales transactions. So we see that there's usually a transactional table 
behind or that is underlying this snapshot fact table because we have now just one period, in this case one week, and then at the end of the week we just take a snapshot or we take the aggregations, how much revenue, how many sales, how much costs did we have and there you can see that they contain usually a lot of measures and not so many dimensions. And if we go also back to our calls example, we can see we have summarized the number of calls in a given day, the number of missed calls and the total duration of our calls. And you can also see again many measures and usually not so many dimensions. Now what is specific about this fact table type. This fact table type is usually not so large in size because we have standardized periods and therefore the grain is not so detailed and we can see that there's already happening some aggregations and therefore this table is also not growing so rapidly but it's growing very continuously. So we have always just one day or one week coming in addition to our data. So with that type of fact table, the growth of our fact table is very controlled. So it's not growing that rapidly. So this is one benefit and of course this can also help with the performance. And also still this data is typically additive and those are usually the grain levels that we need to analyze. So this is the defined grain that is just interesting for the analysis. So usually we also don't lose so much analytical value because we have defined our grain with a lot of thought. And also we have seen that there are a lot of facts usually and not so many dimensions associated. And also we need to note that we have, if we have even a day or one period where there are no events, no transactions, then we can use either null or the zero. So if zero is really more representative because we have zero sales, then the number should be zero. But for example, if we don't have any sales anyways on the weekend and we don't want to have the zero calculated for the average, then we can also just alternatively, for example, use a null value. So this is the second type of our fact table, periodic snapshot fact tables. And now we want to learn about the third and last type, which is the accumulation snapshot fact table. And this is what we are going to do in the next lecture. Now let's talk about the last type, which is the accumulation snapshot fact table. We've already learned about the periodic snapshot fact table and this one is a little bit similar, except that we have one row in this table being defined by the summation of a measurement of many events again, but now this period is not standardized, but it's defined by the lifespan of one process. So for example, one order fulfillment or any other process that has a specific beginning and a specific ending. And usually also some milestones or steps in between that are also interesting to analyze. So this this helps if we want to have some workflow analysis or some process analysis. And an example of that could be for example as we've mentioned order fulfillment or some order production process. For example we have one order that is coming in at a manufacturer, we have the date foreign key, then we have how many products have been ordered, what type of product and then also we have many different date foreign keys for every single step or every single milestone that we have in between this process. For example, the start and the end of the production, the date of the inspection, the shipping date and also for all of these in between steps we can have associated facts. So for example, how many damaged product have been found during the inspection and also as we have seen how many products have been ordered. So you can see 
that it's typical for this type of fact table to have some measures but many date dimensions. So this date dimension is very common and we have usually a lot of them in the accumulation snapshot fact table. And what is characteristic about this type of table? It is the least common but still it can happen and therefore it is good to also know about it. So as we've mentioned this is some type of table that is used and very good if the workflow or the analysis of the process is very important. So in that case we can use such tables that are helpful in this process. And of course we've also seen there are many date or time foreign keys for each of the steps in the process. And we'll also see later on that for this type of table with many date foreign keys we still want to use only one single dimension. And then this will be called a role playing dimension. We'll learn later on what that exactly means if we talk more about dimensions. But what we can take away now is that we use only one dimension and there are many possible connections then to this dimension table. But more on that of course later on. So these are the three different types of fact tables. And now that we've learned about all of these three different types, we want to again summarize what we've learned about these three types and compare them with each other. So that's what we are going to do in the next lecture. Now that we've talked about the different types of fact tables, it's time to compare them with each other. In the transactional fact table, one row is defined by one transaction. In the periodic snapshot, we have one row that is defined by the aggregation of one period. And also we can have multiple dimensions that add also to the grain. So for example, we can have one period, so one day and all of the regions. So the sales of all of the regions. And those additional dimensions can also add to the grain. And in the accumulating snapshot, we have one row that is defined by the lifetime of one process or one event. And those tables also differ in the date dimension. In the transactional table, of course, the date is the transaction date. And in the periodic snapshot, we have that the snapshot date is our related date dimension or foreign key. So this is always the end of the period. And for the accumulating snapshot there are of course then just multiple snapshot dates that are always related to the end of the period. And we've learned also that in the transactional fact table this is very dimensional which helps us to analyze our data very well. And in the periodic snapshot we've seen that in this case usually the amount of dimensions is a bit lower but we have the data just a bit more aggregated and therefore the size is also a bit smaller. And in the accumulating snapshot we've seen that we tend to have especially a lot of date foreign keys and also the dimensions are therefore very high. And now the question what are the measurements of facts in the different tables. Of course in the transactional table we want to measure the performance of the transactions. And then the same goes for the periodic except that we have cumulative measuring because we just aggregate all of that measures in a specific period. And the same goes for the accumulating snapshot table. In here we also just measure all of those processes during the lifetime. Note also that the transactional fact table is usually the largest because it has the most detailed grain and therefore it is very flexible but the performance can be sometimes improved. Usually it is a good performance as well but it can be improved and oftentimes there's the need for some kind of aggregation for our analytical purposes. So in the periodic snapshot table basically we have done that already because we have defined our 
our grain and then we have aggregated the data. So therefore the performance is a little bit better in the periodic snapshot, but usually nowadays we have very good databases with a high performance and therefore oftentimes we have no problem with the performance. But if we have some problems with the performance, it can help to just aggregate the data, define a grain, and this is also something that we learn a little bit more about later on. But now we have learned about these three different fundamental types of fact tables. We've now already learned about the main types of fact tables, but now there's also one type that is a little bit special and this is the so-called factless fact table. And this is not a contradiction because we know that a fact table is different from a fact. So in one fact table there can be multiple facts. So the fact itself is just the numerical measurement that is used to track the performance of a certain business process. And the table is the entire table itself that keeps track of all of those facts, foreign keys and everything included in this fact table. And those two things are now not the same. And it is actually even possible that a fact table has no single fact at all. So we've learned the fact is usually a numerical value. So a measurement that tracks some kind of performance. But sometimes in some fact tables only the dimensional aspects of a certain event or a certain transaction is recorded. So in this case we don't have any facts and we have basically a factless fact table. So this is something that is possible as well. But now let's have a look at the following example. We are working in a company and there is recorded every new employee that is registered in the company. So therefore we have a table and this is our fact table. So we record every single event, so every single registration and all of the dimensional aspects. So what is the entry date of this employer? What is the department that this new employee is registered in? And what is the region? What is the manager of this employee? And all of the associated dimensional aspects. And there are in this case no metrics but all of the dimensional aspects just recorded. And with that we can now answer questions like how many employees have been registered last month? We can do that very easily in SQL just by filtering on the month with the dimension and then we can also just count the number of rows. Of course also we can do that in all of the BI tools. We just filter by the date for example and then just count all of the number of rows. So like this we can also answer questions like how many employees have been registered in a certain region, in a certain department and so on. So these are all of the possible use cases that can be pictured with a factless fact table. So whenever we just want to record the events without having any metrics, then we can still have a factless fact table, which is not a contradiction. Another example is if we have certain promotions and we have no metrics associated with them. So it's just an event with a certain promo code, a certain product that is promoted, a certain campaign that is associated with this promotion and then we can keep track of those events and structure that in a fact table because those are events that are happening but we just don't have any metrics associated because we just register and record the occurrence of the events and the associated dimensional aspects. And now that we've learned about the different types of fact tables, we want to have a closer look at the steps that we need to take when we want to design and implement our fact tables. So that's what we're going to do in the next lecture.